Hi everyone, welcome to this CGRAF technical paper session about modeling and optimizing cone joints for complex assemblies. My name is Ziki Wang and I'm a PhD student from EPFL. This is a joint research work between EPFL and SUTD. An assembly refers to a collection of parts jointed together to achieve a specific form and functionality. Assemblies are used everywhere in our daily life. Compared with the monolithic object, assemblies come with several advantages. First, an assembly can be decomposed into parts with simple shapes, which can be easily fabricated by digital machines. Second, an assembly can be disassembled and tightly packed into a box to save storage and transportation space. Third, during maintenance, only the broken parts of the assembly need to be replaced. This project is motivated by the recent development in digital fabrication. One typical project finished at ETH Zurich is about automatic timber assembly. Their goal is to use robotic arms to assist timber structure assembly. The structure needs to be stable and assemblable at every intermediate assembly stage as well as final stage. Interlocking joints are used to connect adjacent beams to provide structure stability. Assembling beams connected with tight single-direction joints is difficult and requires high assembly precision. Currently, the structure design and assembly planning still requires a huge amount of human work. Therefore, given an unstable assembly with planning contacts and assembly sequence, we propose a computational method utilizing cone joints to make the optimized assembly to be stable and easy to assemble. Here are some previous works about improving part assemblability. The upper one is about avoiding part deadlocking for assembly. The lower one is about minimizing the scaffold usage during the assembly process. The right one is about resolving the collision between assembly structure and robotic arms. Here are works about structure stability optimization. Whiting and their colleagues proposed a force phase structure invisibility measurement. By minimizing this measurement, their method can make the unstable input to be in equilibrium under gravity. Our previous work further extended Whiting's method to improve the structure tilting stability of assemblies. However, very few papers consider both the structure stability and part assemblability in a unified design framework. Several challenges need to be addressed in this project. First, how to select appropriate joint for each contact. The joint stability is measured by how strict it is immobilized the relative movement of the two associated parts. The joint assemblability is measured by all collision-free translation motions that separate the two associate parts. We focus on the translational assembly and disassembly motion since it is commonly used and easy to execute. For a planar joint, it has the strongest assemblability but the weakest stability. The four parts model is not stable. For a single direction joint, it has the strongest stability but the weakest assemblability. The four parts model is hard to assemble. Thus, we propose to use the cone joints, which interpolate between planar and single direction joints, such that this four part assembly can have a good balance between stability and assemblability. Please note that planar and single direction joints are special cases of cone joints. The second challenge is about dividing the hard to solve global problems into easy to solve local problems. Optimizing structural stability is a global problem. In this animation, the energy function E reaches zero if the assembly is in equilibrium under gravity, otherwise the assembly is not stable. Any change of the joints could influence the structural stability of the assembly. Optimizing part assemblability, however, is a local problem. The cone at the right shows the orange part's assemblability. The orange part's assemblability cone is only affected locally by the two edges highlighted in purple. The angle of the cone has to be larger than a user specified number alpha. So what we propose is to replace the previous part geometry-based equilibrium test with an abstract motion-based equilibrium test, which does not rely on the part geometry. Then our kinematic design stage optimizes this abstract representation to make it stable and easy to assemble, which is followed by a geometry design stage where we decomposite the global stability problem into small local problems for each contact and solve it efficiently. 
Let's look at the first part, motion-based equilibrium test. Before introducing our method, we need to make three assumptions. Firstly, all parts must be rigid. Secondly, friction is ignored such that the structure stability of our design is less affected by the material. Lastly, the bottom blue part is fixed. The core is to measure the green part's collision-free movement. The motion we used for stability test is the infinitesimal rigid motion. which is composed of rotational part and translational part. Ideally, the motion should be infinitesimal. Here, the part moves in a short time period for visualization purpose. The motion space of the green part is equal to all collision-free infinitesimal motions that can take the green part off from the blue part. In 2D, since the green part has three degree of freedom, its motion space is a 3D cone. So how to compute this motion space? The part's motion is restricted by the non-collision constraint of each pair of contact point and contact normal. Non-collision constraints means that the dot product between VR, the instant speed of the contact point, and contact normal N should be non-negative. We can rearrange the equation. The left side then is called the generalized normal N hat, and the right side is called the generalized velocity we had. So for each pair of contact point and normal, it provides a linear non-collision constraint. Suppose n is the set of all generalized normals. The motion space v is the dual cone of the generalized normal set n, which means that v must be a convex cone. Now we can draw the motion space for each contact shape. You can see that the volume of the cone decreases from planar joint to tendon mortise joint. In the end, the cone just becomes a plus y vector. When the joint is a smooth curve in 2D, we need to discretize the curve by sampling points and computing normals. The generalized normal space is a curve in 3D. The two endpoints of the curve should match the two endpoints of the generalized normal curve. The motion space is just the dual cone of the generalized normal space. When the joint becomes more tight, the generalized normal space enlarges while the motion space shrinks. Then we would like to use the motion cone to explain why this two-part assembly is not in equilibrium on the gravity. Note that the motion in the motion space is not always physically plausible, like translating the green part along plus y direction is collision-free but won't happen in gravity field. The reason is that the instant velocity of the green part's center of gravity should decrease its gravity potential. The dot product between Vc and G should be non-negative. An assembly is not stable if its motion can satisfy both gravity constraint and non-collision constraints. Geometrically, the gravity constraint is defined by a half space and the non-collision constraints are defined by a cone. The size of the intersection volume measures how far the assembly is away from being stable or we call it structural invisibility. However, this measurement is not easy to compute and hard to be extended for general cases. Thus, we propose this quadratic optimization to measure this two-part assembly's structural stability. The objective function is about whether the motion is physically plausible. The constraints are those non-collision constraints between parts. For general assembly with many parts, the part graph of the assembly is used to store the motion's cones. For example, the contact C21 is the edge from P2 to P1 in the part graph. The edge stores the motion cone of the contact. It turns out that the part graph with motion cones at its edges is actually an equivalent representation for measuring structure's invisibility. We can use a similar quadratic optimization objective. For every contact between parts, we add a motion constraint to avoid part collision. We can find a dual interpolation of our motion-based invisibility measurement in force domain. In classical physics, an assembly is in equilibrium when the summation of all forces and torques are zero. However, the equilibrium conditions only provide a yes and no answer. For rigid part assemblies, the contact forces should be compression only. Therefore, Whiting and their colleagues add uh, additional tension forces at each contact point and use it to measure the structural invisibility. 
By computing the dual problem of our motion-based equilibrium test, our method is equivalent to add additional spot forces acting on the center of each part. The structure in feasibility is the total amount of additional spot forces which stabilize the structure. Compared with the forced-based method, our method has several advantages. First, our method can consider structural stability and part assemblability in a unified framework. Slicing the motion cone with XY plane would produce the joint assembling cone. See right. Second, one stable part graph implies a group of stable part graphs whose motion cones are contained by the original motion cones. Later, we will see that this phenomenon is the key to help us divide the global stability problem into small local problems. Let's move to the second part, the kinematic and geometric design. Before introducing our algorithm, we would like to introduce a motion-based representation which only stores the minimum information for measuring structure stability and part assemblability. Basically, the motion-based representation is the part graph plus motion cones and part disassembling cones. For motion cones, we have explained it in the previous slides. The part disassembling cone, P3, for example, is computed by intersecting the motion cones on its outward edges, which are P3, P2, and P3, P1, and only keeping the translational component. We don't consider the edge P4, P3, since when assembling P3, the part P4 has not installed yet. See left. Our design pipeline is composed of kinematic and geometric design stages, while the motion-based representation works like a bridge to connect the two stages. The goal of the kinematic design is to find a stable and easy-to-assemble motion-based representation. The goal of the geometry design stage is then to find corresponding contact shapes to fit the optimized motion-based representation. Let's first look at the kinematic design stage. The design variables for kinematic design stage are the required joint motion cones and the required part disassembling cones. Please note that everything here is conceptual. The true cones in the final result are often different. We formulate the kinematic design problem as a nonlinear optimization problem and solve it by using classic BFGS method. The objective function measures assembly structure and feasibility using required joint motion cones. For constraints, the required part disassembling cone should be contained by the associate joint motion cones. The size of the disassembling cone should exceed a user-defined angle alpha. Since motion cones are only conceptual, we often use cones with small number of faces, for, for instance, in 2D, to approximate the original motion cones to save optimization time. Here, the cones in dark blue color are optimized results. Then, we move to the second stage, the geometric design stage. We compute the curved shape for each contact one by one following their assembling order. Let's take the purple contact for example. The true motion cone colored in red should contain the required disassembling cone and be contained by the required joint motion cone. However, computing the true cone is very time consuming. We instead use the dual version where n is the generalized normal space. The dual version is relatively easy to solve. Often the geometry design stage can try as many initial joint parameters and types as possible to avoid local minima. Besides the two basic requirements, invalid part geometry and parts with narrow region should be avoided during the geometry design stage. Please refer to the paper for detailed formulations. Finally, we got an assembly that are both stable and easy to assemble. Here is an animation of the optimization process. The cones in both space are cut by plane y equal to 1. The cut cross section are used to visualize the 3D cones. Here is an animation showing the assembling process. Let's move to the result sessions. 
we could extend our method into 3D shell assemblies. The main differences between 3D and 2D is that more context and design variables are needed in 3D, slowing down the optimization process. Here is another 3D result, showing a stable and easy to assemble frame structure connected with cone joints. We also show that for this stacking example, our method use, uses less time finding the stable result, the blue line compared with the baseline method, which directly optimizes the contact shape without using motion-based representation. Our method can also make the assembling process easier by making the assembly stable at each assembling step. Our method can optimize structure to obtain more tilting stability. The igloo can be tilted for at most 35 degrees before collapsing. Conclusion and the future work. In this project, first, we propose cone joints, which enable a good balance between stability and assemblability. Second, we establish a connection between the geometry of a joint and its motion space, and we present a motion-based method for static analysis of assemblies with cone joints. Third, we separate our design pipeline into kinematic and geometric design stage, which makes the optimization computationally trackable. Currently, our method has limited types of joints. In the future, we would like to explore more types of joints and their parametric model. We would like to study their impacts on the motion cones. We also would like to relax the rigid body assumption and consider elastic bodies that are in contact. Optimizing contact geometry for reducing internal stress concentration would be a promising topic. Thank you.